These are all of the street foods you have to try in Krakow, Poland. Now Krakow is definitely one of the more walkable cities we've been to, so everything we're going to be doing today is going to be on foot. They do have a streetcar that takes you around and Uber is available as well for transportation options, but we're really not going to need that, especially for a street food tour. We want to be close to the action, so everything is going to be on foot today. Our first stop of the day are kunczkis. Now these are traditional Polish donuts that usually are filled with cream or jam. The most traditional are filled with plum sauce. I don't know if we're gonna go that traditional today because I think the raspberry sounds really good. The donuts can either be glazed or dusted with powdered sugar and I can't wait to try them. Hello, could I have one glazed raspberry and one glazed salted caramel? We have picked up our punchkis at Dobra Punchkarnia. I could not be more excited right now. This literally translates to good donut place. We looked it up. There's a few locations around the city center and they just looked so amazing in the window so we had to try them. This one is, I think, a raspberry so we're gonna bite in and see how it is. So it's absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna have to work a little harder to get to the filling. <laughs> Still filling? Okay, first observation, the filling must be really deep in the middle because I just tear the donut almost in half and it's still this, but just by itself it's amazing. I actually am familiar with punchkis. We have them back in Wisconsin on Fat Tuesday, right before Mardi Gras. It's just the tradition, all of the local bakeries make them. And I always thought they were spelled differently because we always said punchkis, but if you look at it, it looks like pachki or pizatski. So at first I'm like, wow, have I been saying it wrong my whole life? Turns out that's just how it's pronounced. Finally found the filling. Okay, first bite with the filling. Let's try this. Yeah, nice. It tastes like a natural jam. Like it's not like the gooey sugar you'd think of. Definitely real raspberry in it, which is awesome. It's almost like a raspberry puree. This punchki is perfectly fried. The outside is crispy. Mm. And it's really actually quite dense for a donut. Almost resembles like a sweet bread rather than like a cake donut. And the jam is just spectacular. It's like a Krispy Kreme meets a brioche bun with actual raspberry preserves in it. Our next item on the street food list is an Avarzhanak. We are trying with these pronunciations, we are doing our absolute best. We have seen these things absolutely everywhere. They're on every street corner here in Krakow. They're meant to be like a midday snack, so that's perfect for us because that's just what we need right now. The great thing about Avarzhanak is that they are really affordable. They're usually only two zloty 50. Now this one over at the corner that we just went to was three zloty. I only had five zloty in coins, so the woman was very upset with me. I wanted two of them and I just said, okay, fine, I'll just take one. And she's like, ah, fine. She just threw two at me. So we got two of them, but it's usually gonna be around two to three Polish zloty, which is less than 50 cents US. Really affordable little snack. It's basically a hybrid between a bagel and a pretzel. So you can kind of see how it has features of both. It looks like a bagel in the circular shape and almost kind of feels like it to a certain degree, but I think overall the texture is more similar to a pretzel. Let's see how this tastes. And they always come with sesame seeds on them as well. Sometimes they're darker seeds. This is just straight up sesame seed. Okay, it's got some taste to it, which to be completely honest, I was not expecting. I thought it was gonna be pretty bland, but there's a good taste to it. There's a good flavor. The sesame flavor really comes through. There's definitely a sweetness to it. Now, Polish people say that it is an absolute sin to dip this in anything, but I really think some butter or some cream cheese would go a long way with this. That's just me. But I can see this being a really good snack on the go. So Max asked the lady for two, and so we got one that's clearly sesame, and this one looks like an everything bagel. Now, if I'm being honest, I've kind of been avoiding these things all week. They just didn't seem that appealing to me. It's not bad. It's just, to me, like a typical bread roll. But if you're in a pinch and you have three Zlatis, this is the perfect snack. I gotta say, I would love some cream cheese with this. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. 
for our next street food item, we will be heading to the Jewish quarter of Krakow, which is actually really known for its street food. We're going to be trying a few different things over there, and we're excited to check out that neighborhood as well. The next street food item on our list is known as Japiokanka. I hope I'm saying that right. It's also known as a Polish pizza. It's kind of just an open-faced sandwich. It could be somewhere between a cheese bread and a pizza. And depending what kind of mood you're in, there's a lot of different things that can be on it. There's a lot of different variety within the toppings. We've been told that this is the place to come if you're looking for Japiokanka. It's an entire circle that's dedicated to it. There's multiple different vendors. This Japiokanka paradise is located on Pak Novi in the Kazimierz district. Could I have one with ham? And um... Is it a katak? Yeah, number seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. uh, with ham. ham. With ham. Ham. And can I add chives? Um... Shif... Shifpiak? Uh... Green onion? Yeah. Green onion. Ham. With... Uh... Shifpiorek? Yes, yes. That's chives, chives tak. And with ketchup? With ketchup, yeah. Yeah. Look at all this green onion on our Jabia Kanka. We've ordered one with ham, a lot of chives, and ketchup. Now all of these sandwiches come with cheese and mushrooms already on it, and then you just pay for the extra toppings. My Polish friend from college actually used to make us a variation of this type of sandwich. She would use two pieces of bread toasted with various deli meats and cheese. And I remember so distinctively the use of green onion and ketchup. Wow, oh yeah. Oh my God, that is so, so good. The baguette is so perfectly toasted, crunchy on the outside, still pillowy on the inside. The cheese and the mushroom are melted to perfection. The ham is crispy on top and those spring onions, it's honestly the best part. And of course, a little ketchup, never hurts. Now, unlike Sid, I have no prior experience with these types of sandwiches and green onion mixed with ketchup, it just didn't sound as good to me as it did to Sid, I'll be honest. But I'm gonna try it and I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt because Sydney said it's pretty good. So let's, let's see if she's right about this. It actually is pretty good. The chive flavor, believe it or not, is not overpowering. It's really nice. When I first looked at it, I'm like, that's way too many chives on there. But for whatever reason, they balance well. And the ketchup isn't like a Heinz, like the really kind of gloopy stuff that I'm not really a fan of. It's like a very tangy ketchup and it, it, it does work well. You know what I noticed right away is it's really good bread. The, the, the quality of the bread is fantastic. And I think that that's probably what makes the sandwich overall. If you have like a really, kind of crunchy or old bread. I can imagine this being kind of unpleasant to eat, but it's perfectly balanced. The textures, I really, really like it. It's probably not the most flattering thing to eat because I mean, look at it, <laughs> but definitely an experience worth having here in Poland. The place is truly amazing. I mean, there are so many options. It's an entire circle of Zakiopampa, Zakiopanka. Our Zakiopanka, which was enough for both of us, only cost 19 Polish zloty, which comes out to around $4.40. And again, these are renowned as some of the best in the city. So I'm sure if you go elsewhere, you could find them even cheaper. The great thing about Polish street food, really tasty, really affordable. Another classic Polish street food is pierogies. Delicious dumplings that are filled with all sorts of goodness. However, we've already done a video highlighting pierogies specifically. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check that out. Our next stop is not necessarily a street vendor per se, but this is a very unique aspect of Polish food culture. This is our first milk bar. This one is known as Milk Bar Pod Tadipa. Milk bars are a cafeteria style restaurant where you kind of just go around, pick what you want, and they offer a variety of Polish cuisine, including what I'm most excited to try today, potato pancakes. Milk bars are a very affordable lunch option, so that's why we picked it for part of our street food tour. So excited to try this. So this is the full menu right here. We're gonna go ahead and take pictures of the things we want because these are very traditional establishments. Sometimes there's only Polish spoken. Although I will say there is English on the menu, which is a good sign. 
just to be sure, let's take some pictures. These are one of the things I was most excited about in Poland. They're known as platskis, and we refer to them in English as potato pancakes. Now, I do have some Polish in my family, so growing up, we'd sometimes have potato pancakes. Sometimes served with applesauce, sometimes served with sour cream. These are served with mushroom. I hope I don't offend anyone in my family, but I've never had a potato pancake like that. That's so good. It's so dense and so rich. They kind of look on the surface like a hash brown patty, but there's so much more to it. There's just like a really thick something in that batter, and it's, oh my god, is it good. Mm. I'm in Plotsky heaven right now. To accompany the Plotskys, we also wanted to try what's like the most traditional drink here at a milk bar. It's called compote, and it's basically just water that has a mix of berries in it. It's unsweetened, and it can be served either hot or cold. This one's served kind of just room temperature. And yeah, it's nice. It's not too sweet, it's really good. Our first milk bar experience was so cool. It almost felt like we were at school with our little lunch trays. And there are tons of options on the menu, so there's really something for everyone there. The concept of a Polish milk bar actually began during the communist era when Poland was a satellite Soviet state. And the idea was that it was very affordable and a lot of people could dine all at once. At the time, most restaurants were labeled as capitalist, even if they had decent prices. So the milk bar became where most people would eat, because it would have been an absolute luxury to eat out. So it was really cool to see the modern version of it, how it's still part of the culture and it's still something that people like to do as an affordable way to just have a really good lunch. Now it's like a special occasion to go to the milk bar with your parents or your grandparents. And I can definitely say that I'm a fan. One thing that's really important to keep in mind as far as etiquette in milk bars, all milk bars are self-service, so you're gonna go up to the counter to order your food and then you always have to pick up after yourself. We're back in the old town and we found an amazing kielbasa restaurant. This restaurant is called Kielbasa i Schnurek. <laughs> These pronunciations. It looks really good, highly rated, and it's a small little intimate place. And although this is a restaurant and not street food, kielbasa is a street food that just happens to be on this menu. Let's go have some right now. Can't recommend kielbasa i Schnurek enough. They had a lot of different types of sausage. Kielbasa essentially just means fried Polish sausage. So there's a lot of different kinds. They had a chicken, a beef. We tried their famous drunk sausage, which is sausage that's served with beer and onions. It's amazing. It's just so flavorful. Again, this place is right across the street from Ponty Park and the surroundings are so beautiful. We're gonna go for one last walk through the park. That is officially gonna wrap up our street food tour here in Krakow, Poland. If you have any questions related to the foods we got, where they are located, how to find them, be sure to put that in the comment section below. Also, if you're from Poland and if we missed anything, please let us know because these were basically the top five or six that we heard about, but I'm sure there's many more street foods to try. Make sure you put your comments below as well. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. Also, if you subscribe, it really helps us out. We really appreciate every single subscription. If you don't mind, it takes a second of your time. We'll see you in the next one. Plenty more Polish content on the way.